I'm going to call the uh, the meeting to order. It's August 12th, and it looks like it's around uh, 517. And I welcome the, uh, the three members of the, the personnel board. And then I understand we have some other folks who may, who are involved in in, per, in some of the uh, uh, decisions that uh, and um, um, actions that we're going to take regarding items in the um, on the agenda. So, um, and it looks like we're going to Amy, if you're right, uh, we're going to do a I've called the meeting to order, and then we'll do a roll call of members present. Jim Richardson. Uh, Jimmy, you're muted. He's, he's muted. Yeah. Uh, present. Okay. Thank you. Um, and Nancy Crowley. Present. And then Bill Morachek, present. So we have the members in the quorum, uh, and therefore we are able to move forward with uh, the meeting. Uh, I think we uh, we're going to go to, if I'm writing, we're going to go right to number three, uh, the agenda item. Correct. Okay. So I understand that we have to every year have um, the board elect the chair, the vice chair, and uh, a clerk um, of the personnel board, which is effective what day or what what month? Uh... Um, so tradition has been that um, after town meeting each year, boards and committees kind of regroup and take a vote. I don't think there's not a, a specific effective date. It's just to have okay. an annual right. election. Just to have a, an annual uh, um, event like this that can be recorded in the minutes. So in terms of... Um, of the election, I'll I will uh, I'm certainly prepared to uh, continue as the chair of the personnel board. Um, I'd certainly welcome uh, any uh, interest that Jim or Nancy may have. So um, my yeah. interest is for you to continue. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I I agree wholeheartedly. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, so I guess we need to have one of you move uh, to elect me as the chair uh, for the personnel board. Okay. Sure, I can do it. Um, I move to have Bill Morachek serve as, uh, continue to serve as chair of the personnel board for the, for the next year. I, all right, is there, I is there second? second that. I second all that. Right. So um, all in favor, uh, Jim? Yes, I. Okay, Nancy? Aye. And uh, Bill? Aye. Now we go to the uh, the vice chair. And currently serving in that capacity is Jim, right? Not Jim. that I'm aware of. You're what? I said not that I'm aware of, but. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought. I, I, I wasn't aware that we had any other roles. But well, I could um, be mistaken. So I'm, I'm, I'm certainly willing to entertain um, a motion or an in, uh, who, uh, Jim or Nancy or either one of you interested in serving as the vice chair of this personnel board? Um, I, I wouldn't mind unless Jim would like to do it. That's fine. No, you can. Jim, are you sure? You can do it. Yep, that's fine. So let's have a motion to have Nancy probably serve as the vice chair. Um, can I have that motion, please? That's my motion that uh, Nancy Crowley serves as the vice chair to the okay. personnel board for the next year. And I will uh, second that um, uh, that nomination. All in favor? So Jim? Aye. Uh, Bill Morachek, aye. And Nancy Crowley? Aye. All right. Now we come to the clerk of the personnel board. And I think Amy, you know, we've, we've can you just um, give a short overview of what you see are the duties and responsibilities of the clerk? I don't think I've ever officially seen anything in writing. Sure, I, I believe there are uh, duties listed probably in the committee handbook. So we could go uh, back to that if needed, but 
um, along with a lot of other information. So I'm not, not expecting that. But um, the clerk for the personnel board at this point, um, I have been able to provide uh, clerical support, meaning minute taking, um, posting, making sure that the meetings are posted in time um, and keeping those records. That has not always been the case. So traditionally the personnel board was responsible for its own minutes as um, I think the majority of, of boards and committees are, but not all. Uh, and, and this board has asked for assistance in that, uh, which I provide as much as I can. So right now, Karen Farrow, who is actually um, an employee at the light plant, she, I had asked employees if anybody was interested and she stepped up. So um, she is, is doing that for us and has for the last few meetings. And I will continue to do that as long as I can. We didn't have a specific budget for that, uh, to provide that over time and all, but I'm, um, I'm at the moment, given how often the committee is, is meeting or how infrequently we're able to provide that. So I'll, I'll keep uh, doing that. So then the clerk for the board, I think just needs to be available if needed to take notes during the meeting and work with minutes and uh, make sure there are postings if if the HR department can't provide that at some point for you. All right. Um, I think when we had this particular discussion last time, um, you know, the decision was we didn't, we didn't have a clerk that was uh, officially um, appointed and voted upon because of the the, the really the I guess the amount of work that's sort of involved in, in this. Um, do we have any comments from uh, Nancy or Jim as to uh, the clerk's role? And you know, at this point, Jim, you're the only one who doesn't have an assignment. But I don't want. Well to, played, you know, Nancy. Well played. I don't. <laughs> I don't want to. Uh, you know, I th I think if, if we had. 20 people on the personnel board, it'd be one, one thing, but, you know, in terms of the amount of time and so forth, which I, I don't have any clue, uh, other than the fact that the minutes that have been produced for the last, I don't know, year or so are quite extensive, um, even a little bit more extensive than I think perhaps is necessary, but I don't know. I don't, I, 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 I don't know. So, um, Jim, do you have any any thoughts as to whether or not this is a role based on what you've heard from from Amy that uh, that you would be willing to accept? Um, yeah, for, with the with the provisions that you know what we what we had discussed last time, we are um, you know I don't I'm not the best note taker. Um, so if if it comes to the point of of having to produce the notes, is the access to the video recordings available? Is that something that? Yes, the recordings are available, and we have been posting them online um, for the last the last several meetings right. anyway. Uh, uh, right. So that's, so I, that's okay. fine. I think at this point, then we can we can have a motion to have. Jim Richardson serve as the clerk. Yes, I would. I would like to say just add to that. So, Jim, I feel bad. I will. I do owe you one <laughs> because I'll be honest with you. I um I didn't have to do it very often, and I prayed every time that I didn't have to do it because I'm not good at doing it. And I I really feel that it uh, for me, and I think to the others too, that it really takes away from the meeting because I was so concerned about getting the notes and putting stuff down that I really, I really didn't enjoy the meeting or get much out of it. Um, so I really felt that it was wonderful, Amy, that you brought somebody in to help us out. Particularly, there are only three of us, you know? Um, and I don't know about, about Jim, but I think it's important that, you know, that he's with us <laughs> at the meeting and not really having to think about doing the notes. So, um, anyways, I do feel very strongly that we it would be nice to have somebody doing it and to allow them um, to participate more in the in the meeting. Um, now, that's that's my take. But, well, um, I think I, I just want to state that I think Nancy made some really good points, 
And um, I think I appreciate Amy's willingness to have uh, sort of uh, first uh, first priority of, of doing the minutes. And uh, I thank her a lot for, and for the, you know, for Karen, I guess, who's been doing a lot. And I think we've had even Stephanie do some uh, minute right. taking as well. So yes. certainly as a board chair, I, I, I can say on behalf of the personnel board, we, we, we thank you for uh, your willingness to, to do that. So I think, um, um, Nancy, can you, uh, we need a motion to have Jim um, appointed as the clerk of the personnel board. Um, I certainly make a motion that um, Jim Richardson be appointed as clerk of the personnel board. And I will second that. Um, <clears throat> we'll do and vote. Uh, Nancy Crowley? Aye. In favor? Bill yes. Maracek, aye. In favor? And Jim? Aye. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank each of you for your continued uh, involvement. And if we can obtain some more residents and citizens who are interested uh, in joining us, that would be even uh, that would be even better. So that's a goal we can try to all work on together. So I think we're ready um, to move on to the fourth item on the on the uh, the agenda, which is miscellaneous compensation schedule updates. So I'll let Amy proceed from there. Okay. Um, so just sort of as a uh, refresher, the miscellaneous compensation schedules were made primarily for <laughs> limited status and temporary positions. Limited status are those that work less than 20 hours per week, sometimes year round, sometimes intermittently, but on an ongoing basis. And of temporary are those that are for specific periods of time. And we, we know that they'll end at that time. But in addition, over the years, it's been used to um, also provide ranges or sub ranges for some that go to town meetings. So for example, when the BD Center opened and uh, we were looking at how do we classify the many types of positions there and, and they have multiple functions, people get multiple pay rates, um, you know, different rates from when they're lifeguarding them when they are teaching a lesson or doing a fitness program. So the way that we did that and presented at town meeting was to very wide ranges on the scale that goes to town meeting for the swim and fitness and then to have sub ranges that are handled through this schedule. So that's how it's been going for a while. So on the um, the first schedule that I talk about, we've broken it into three categories. The first one um, to talk about today is Schedule 7-2, which is for recreation positions. And again, it, it uh, can cover uh, both regular status or limited status and temporary. The section of that schedule that's for someone's fitness managerial these are positions that uh, can come from the general, uh, the BD budget. So they are revenues that come out of that. They're not tax-based positions. And we've got them listed here with salary ranges separate from the, the regular classification because of the funding sources and the need to be flexible, flexible there, sorry. Uh, so uh, at this point, the BD Center is in need of a new position, a role that hasn't been filled in the past, a full-time position for a marketing and special events coordinator. Um, I did include a job, draft job description in the package just so you could get a sense of, of the duties. Um, this position is going to be pivotal in helping to generate the funds and the, the interest in um, the BD Center to help fund this position as well as others. Um, the recreation management, along with Deputy Town Manager Kate Hodges, who, who is on this call right now, she's there if we, if we do have questions for her about this. Uh, they are constantly balancing um, and looking at what's what they can afford through the BD Center based on enrollments combined with um, market data, what's going on both in the private and public fitness industries. It's a little bit different in this case because we don't have a lot of direct, um, directly comparable 
uh, positions in other municipalities. There's some, I'm not saying that other sort of recreation positions or even some positions, but just the, the structure of the beauty center makes it a little bit different. So um, I did go through the classification factors using our standard system that we use for classifying all regular status positions and uh, scored that and it came out uh, in the same category as the B program manager in terms of level. So what we've recommended is a salary range that is the same as the B program manager. Um, that that works from a budget standpoint, from an equity standpoint, classification, and and we think that um, we'll be able to recruit using that range. All right. Um, any questions or, or comments uh, from members of the personnel board? I, I actually just, um, I want to just clarify. I do believe that the funds that are um, collected from the participants that belong to the BD Center, <clears throat> that, um, that takes care of its own um, bills and costs, right? Amy? Right. The, okay. I just, just have to say that for me, certainly the um, there's quite a difference in what was the min and the max. I mean, there seems to be um, a fair amount of difference on some of them. Um, but I didn't know if a lot of it went with the increase in pay, the basic $15 an hour, uh, particularly on the ones below. I was just curious. Uh, okay, so I haven't yet addressed the uh, different changes okay. below. So I'll get okay. to that. So right oh, now, I'm sorry. just no, that's okay. I'm just focusing on the BD Marketing Special Events Coordinator. And actually, I haven't spoken about the 2% um, uh, increase to the other ranges. But right now, it's just the creation of the new position. All right. Thank you. Cool. Jim, do you have any uh, any comment? I do. Sorry. I was on mute. Um, is there an equivalent type position within the rec department? Um, for Mar I mean, I know that they do an awful lot of um, work with the, the, you know, the camps and the um, golf tournaments and all that sort of stuff. Is there any similar type position on the, on the rec side? Not a dedicated position to that. Uh, no. Okay. There used to be a, a position that got involved with special events that um, was restructured and no longer focuses on that. Um, Okay. But not the not the same marketing position. Uh, Amy, a couple I guess comments or questions from from me. When this was presented, um, there was obviously a need, and there was you know there was a and then you've helped to identify what the cost is. So I assume that that. The, there's got to be, I guess there is a goal to be able to cover this expense uh, that is going to be incurred by adding this, this pay, these payroll dollars. And those payroll dollars will come from, would have to come from increased membership or increased funding from some grant. I mean, what, what was the, what was, what went into being able to sort of say, yes, we need this, but this is how we're going to pay for it. Right. So um, the revenue from the BD Center would pay for it. I don't get involved in that piece on, on the budgeting, not not specifically. Uh, Kate could talk about it. And and really the the creation of positions and the whole budget <laughs> process is done kind of in other other forums. And then once a position is approved, the town manager has the authority to create positions within the approved budgets. Um, and then the personnel board reviews whether um, the proposed title and salary range um, seems appropriate from a perspective of, of equity and compensation and, and all, whatever factors that you think. But the, the budgeting of this, I would need uh, Kate to specifically talk about if she is available. I, I am. Um, so uh, in 2015, um, which was the year that I um, started in Concord, there were uh, eight full-time um, employees that were there, uh, many with salaries that were nearing the $100,000 range. 
And um, over the course of several years, uh, we lost folks either through uh, retirements or attrition or they just decided to go other places. So it caused us to uh, what we're calling right size, which is uh, just a nicer way of saying downsize. Um, and we did actually have two layoffs um, back in 2017 um, because BD wasn't you know, financially able to, to pay for those. Um, so right now we have uh, three full-time um, administrative staff there. We have a general manager, an assistant to the general manager, and then somebody that deals with sort of the front desk and billing, um, et cetera. Of course, there's other uh, people, lifeguards and that kind of stuff, but as far as the administration. And so the two areas of focus that we have um, Andy Dutton, who's the general manager, and Anna McEwen, who's the rec director, and I are, you know, membership, so uh, increasing membership, making things more family friendly, using some of the feedback that we got from the community, and, you know, kind of changing the way that people look at BD. Um, and so that's how we came up with the membership and marketing manager, and then, of course, uh, an aquatics person. Um, for obvious reasons, and we're actively recruiting for that. So uh, the number of F FTEs that we have in the administration will still be uh, two less than 2015, but we're trying to build up to, to that other level. And currently we have the funding to be able to pay uh, an aquatics person and a, and a membership person at the mid-range. And so that would be what we would be able to, to offer someone should we have a, a recruitment that yields a good, a good candidate. All right. Thank you. Very, very good. Very good. Uh, any other uh, comments? So the only other comment I, I, I would have is just looking from an optics, I guess, optics point of view, looking at the, at the jobs, the, the difference between a BD program manager and a marketing and specialist events coordinator, given the ranges are exactly the same. And I think, Kate, what you just said that there's, there's really no incumbents. Um, and maybe this is, you know, one of the differences between you know, government and, and private sector in terms of job placements. But is there really a huge difference or why would we have uh, separate jobs, I guess. Well, so um, membership is not necessarily a program as much as, um, and so I know that that's a nuance, but there, uh, the program person um, requires a different skill set um, and a different number of certifications. And while they both come out in the same range, the, the classification takes different things into account, including years of service, like I just said, and, and specialized training. So they really are two different jobs. And to actively recruit somebody for a membership position, I think we really need to call it out as that. Or else I think that the job gets confusing. If you're saying you're a member, you're a program director in charge of membership, that isn't quite, um, that isn't quite as mainstream because where we're going to try to be advertising this are places like Total Fitness and uh, Lexington Sports Clubs and Boston Sports Clubs Incorporated and, and some of those larger, you know, country club styles that have membership uh, people. And, and that's that's what the position is historically called. Okay. Oh, thanks. Yeah, may, that makes sense. All right. Um, Amy, what in terms of the agenda, in terms are we at a point or uh, to be able to, I guess, approve this uh, this position and your placement, or do we have to move, or do, do we need to add in the two percent increase? You don't need to add the two percent. We can do that as a separate vote. I I put the I, the suggested motions I did were based on grouping them together in like actions, and so this is unique because it's a regular status. Okay. New position. So, uh, so that's why there's more focus on it than some of the others. So we'll need a motion then to accept the BD marketing and special events coordinator position with the particular um, compensation range that you've established. Is, is that a succinct way of putting this? Correct. So I and will then need a motion from uh, someone to be able to, to say that we 
approve and accept uh, accept this. I'll do. I, I, I make a motion to um, add the title BD Marketing and Special Events Coordinator uh, with the salary range of 52.2 to 70,533 to the schedule of swim and fitness managerial positions. All right. Is there a second? I second that motion. All right. And so we'll we'll vote. Uh, all in favor? Nancy? Aye. Yes. And uh, Bill, aye. And Jim? Aye. All right. So that has been approved. Uh, we then going to move to the 2% increase discussion. Is that yes. a good place to go? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So again, this 2% only applies to that section of the schedule uh, that's labeled as swim fitness managerial. And as you may recall, um, this through the town meeting process and the budget process and, and um, you know, updating the class and comp plans for the new fiscal year, a 2% increase was applied to all the ranges for other regular status positions. Um, and that was, that was approved through town meeting. This batch doesn't go through the town meeting process. And because town meeting was so close to July 1, we didn't, we couldn't do this in the same cycle that we normally would. We usually have a couple months in there that we're getting all of these in order and coming to the personnel board before July 1 happens. But um, again, couldn't do it quite well on that schedule this year. So all this is recommending, I guess not to, um, is that we increase these salary ranges in the same way that we increased all the other regular status ranges by 2% effective July 1. All right. Any questions or comments, uh, Jim or Nancy? No. Not for me. All right. Why don't we move then to uh, uh, accept this, um, this proposal? Um, we need a, a motion to to do that from one nice. of you two. Okay. I'll make a motion uh, to move to approve a 2% increase to the swim and fitness managerial salary ranges effective 7 1 2021. All right. Is there a second? Yep. I'll second. All right. Jim seconds. So we'll vote. Um, uh, Bill, yes. Um, Jim? Yes. And Nancy? Yes. All right. So that has been been voted upon and approved. Uh, so now we'll, we're going to the third bullet in agenda item four. All right. So, schedule seven two. Yep. Still on the same schedule. There's a couple things going on here that I, I grouped together uh, because these are just more of the standard. Typically, when we update the miscellaneous comp schedule, there's a lot of different changes going on, and the board looks at them all and, and does them as a group. And these, um, so the first batch I'm just going to talk about are the ones under the category swim and fitness general. And you'll see that uh, what we've had to date is uh, that under several categories, such as lifeguard, we had level one and level two, water safety instructor level one, level two. Uh, this goes back uh, quite a while, you know. I don't know that we had that in place right when the BD Center opened, but but it's been in place under a whole different management team. And um, it's really been something that hasn't been utilized or needed, these level two. Um, it really not finding that the original, I'm sorry, the original intent was to say level two would be people with, you know, more uh, certifications and skill sets and, and all of that. But really, that's not something that they're finding is needed. So um, Kate Hodges and Recreation Director Anna McCune have been looking at these along with the other BD management and saying, you know, it would just be uh, easier to work with a uh, more realistic range for one category for these without uh, having people thinking that there's some possibility of going to a level two that doesn't really exist. So they've proposed to eliminate those and combine the ranges. And again, they're not using the top part of those ranges that had been set up some time ago. So they, um, you'll see that, for example, um, their lifeguard, the maximum level two went up to 2050. They don't need that. So they think really right now we can cap it at 1875. Uh, they have, again, looked at market data. They follow what is it taking to hire people into these positions, want to be both competitive, but also manage the budget 
and these are the ranges that they think they can work within for those. Um, okay. Uh, questions uh, from Jim from the board, Nancy? No, I'm fine. Okay. Uh, no, I just uh, one point, uh, Amy. The um, so so who actually did the examination and analysis of of other either other municipalities or other organizations? Where who was do, who did that work? Yeah, for the for the limited status and temp, that's usually uh, that would be Anna McCune, the rec director, and the deputy town manager uh, mostly. Uh, I think they also pull in the BD manager if it's for those. They're, they're gathering the data, and then we talk about it and go over and kind of combine that with what we're finding in terms of recruitment and, and equity. Uh, but they're the ones that have gotten that data. Um, the it's data so, for regular – oh, go ahead, Keith. Sorry. I was just going to say in terms of lifeguards and, and some of the more conventional um, positions, Mass Recreation and Parks Association puts out a um, – salary survey to um, all of the communities in Massachusetts every two years. So we, we usually use that data. And then we have um, five area swim and fitness centers that are private, but we, we use those, the Thoreau Club being one of them, and we, we try to come in around those areas. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I was just going to, like, I would say earlier in my career, it was much easier. We'd have our benchmark positions. We'd kind of have three groups, types of employees, and it was easier. We knew who our comparable communities were. And we'd gather that data for the benchmark and, and uh, create the scales based on that, particularly for the regular status. And that that is still true. Um, but the more diverse our workforces become and the types of services we provide, we've needed to take different approaches in each different type, uh, each department or, or type of work. So, you know, um, surveying light plants, you know, where we might have looked only at uh, the public sector before, our competition really is the private sector too, and we need to take that into consideration in a way we might not need to with some of our other public position, uh, regular status positions. And the Beatty Center, again, presented us with a whole different uh, type of employee than we had been encountering when we just had uh, more simple recreation services, uh, videographers, things like that. We've just expanded the types of services. So we gather information from a variety of sources. I get a lot through my association for regular positions, but I'm not going to find them for all of these. So just uh, for me to understand, the when we're talking about 7-2, Schedule 7-2, mm -hmm. what what uh, involvement, if any, do you have, Amy, or someone on your staff to monitor or or uh, validate um, this information or these sources, or is there any, you know, or, or is there any time spent by your organization? Um, yes, there's time spent. I'm regularly reviewing information. Um, Kate and Anna would sent me information that they had. We talk about it. We, we consider what what data is relevant to what we're trying to achieve and our own experience and whether you know whether what we're getting from other places is comparable or not. Sometimes my look is is limited. I'll talk with them for five or ten minutes and it makes sense and I see it and it's obvious based on what we're doing. And other times we'll spend more time and I'll I might go off and be looking for other information to validate it. So it varies. All right. Well, I think that's an important uh, element to make certain that because you do have oversight for all the employees and um, and even though you're not necessarily obtaining the actual data, you're reviewing the data that was obtained and validating, right. which I think is critical to having right. some integrity to um, to the system. Yeah, we have we have things coming through the HR office regularly from other towns, sharing information. And I'm watching it. In to get a sense and every single salary change that comes for individual salary comes through the HR office and our staff reviews it. We look at it. Does this make sense? We're looking at reports to say, well, does, you know, does this seem like it lines up? Our system is, is not as structured as many towns with steps where you can just say, oh, you, okay, you start at step one yeah. and go to two, three, four. So it takes constant review and looking and kind of say, does this make sense? Is it justified? Right. 
-hmm. All right, so I think we're at a point, uh, unless Jim or Nancy, you have any additional questions or comments. You need no. me anymore? I'm sorry. I just, I have something at six that I have to jump. Is there, it, Amy, are you all set? I think we're all set. The only other thing uh, that we were going to talk about was the, um, yeah, the other few rates that are on this, the camp director, the private program. But oh, I, yeah. I can, I can okay. That. that was the end of it. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Kate. Okay. So no, going, I don't have any further questions. Okay. No, I don't see that. All right. So we need a motion to uh, approve uh, miscellaneous comp schedule seven dash two as proposed. Can I make one more note? Um, the rest of that schedule has some some other changes that were made for the same reasons that we've been talking about. But at the very end, you see visitor center attendance and guide are coming off. And that's because of a restructure, and you'll see those moved on to the next schedule when we talk about that. A, a restructure that was approved by the select board on Monday. Okay, um, you know that that's good to note. Uh, therefore, uh, we we still need a motion to accept schedule seven dash two. All right, I, I I can do it. So I move uh, make a motion to move to approve. Uh, other amendments to miscellaneous compensation uh, schedule uh, 7-2 as proposed. All right. Is there a second? I will second that. Okay, good. And we'll <clears throat> vote. Um, Bill, yes. Uh, Nancy? Yeah. And Jim? Yes. Okay. So we move to uh, schedule discussion 7-1. Okay. And on 7-1 today, where uh, the changes are all focused within the category of the Planning and Land Management Department. Marsha Esmissen is here. She is the Director of Planning and Land Management. So if questions come up, we may call on her. Um, and there are a few things that are going on here. Thanks, Marcia. Um, so let's see. I, I, I'll start with the Visitor Center to tie it into what I was just seeing. So, the visitor center has, um, when the town took it over not that many years ago, within five years, I think, um, and created these positions, it was created within the recreation uh, division. And um, now there is uh, a restructure going on that the town manager's been talking with the, the select board about this week and they approved to move the visitor center and um, add more functions related to economic vitality and put that under the, the department of planning and land management and um and so with that there's both the need to just move the the uh positions that we have on to a different schedule and then also uh there are some new needs that are anticipated um, one of them is the need for a, a clerk because recreation was set up with the um, office support to handle certain things related to scheduling and accounts payable and, and payroll. And so now moving it over to planning and land management, we anticipate that some of those duties may be done uh, by somebody who may also uh, serve as an attendant or it's just, you know, a few hours combined with some of what the um, the staff of the direct the department of, of land management so we need a clerk role um and also there's a new uh need for what's listed here as an ambassador and that has to do with a relationship with the national park service and marcia would you like to describe that a little bit more well um minuteman national park came to the town and uh, said that we would like to be open um longer uh, or more frequently on the weekends, but they didn't have the capacity to hire additional staff. They didn't have the funding. And so they asked if the town could enter into a relationship and, and help provide that support. Um, we have, uh, we looked at it as an opportunity for our, um, our attendants, our tour guides to provide information about the town of Concord, which the rangers of the National Park Service 
can't. So uh, we thought this would be a great opportunity to to expand the information that's presented to visitors to the to the Minutemen Visitor Center and to share in that responsibility as well as increasing their hours. So that's the agreement that we have in place. This it's a first year. Uh, we can renew it, um, but the the Rangers have a higher salary rate, which is why we've created an ambassador program. All right, thank you. Questions or comments, uh, Jim or Nancy? Um, I just want to ask, will they all be um, located at the visitor center? Um, they they, uh, they share their time. So some of them they're some of them are tour guides that work out of the Concord Visitor Center. Okay. They have uh, weekend hours or um, like a, a Monday or Friday hours at the the Minuteman National Park Visitor Center up at um, on Liberty Street, um, the Barrett Mansion. So, right, okay. uh, Buttrick Mansion. I'm sorry. Uh. Jim, any uh, question or comment? I don't. Nope. Um, my only question, I guess, is just to understand the, the total payroll. So in essence, uh, we're talking the same number of people, but they are now becoming a part of a relationship that we've established with the, um, the park or rangers. And, but, but in essence, the, the total payroll that's being expended is, is going to be the same. Um, we, we've expanded the hours for our staff. We haven't necessarily increased the number of staff. And uh, Beth Williams is uh, currently the manager, and she oversees the scheduling so that she makes sure that there's the coverage and that there's the salary to cover all of this. So it's, uh, it is included. She has a budget that she has to work to and uh, has to manage that piece of it. But I know so all of these are uh, limited status. They are you know, they they don't work up twenty or more hours a week. They right. pick up shifts. They if somebody comes in and, and books a tour for tomorrow, then they are then we have an employee scheduled to work. If nobody books any tours for tomorrow, then nobody works. So um, the number of the total hours worked and the number of, of people that we may need to have employees we may need to have to fill the demand could vary um, depending on, on how many people are seeking the service. And this is another one where the, the, the people come and they pay for a tour. So it helps pay for the salary. So as demand goes up, the, the number of, of hours or staff could also right. change. Well, thank you for, uh, for clarifying that. Can I just, uh, I just want to ask one more question to Masha. Is that okay? Um, Masha, I think is Beth, um, her office is upstairs at the visitor center or is it with you in planning and land management? You are correct. It's at the visitor center on the second floor. Okay. So she gets, so there for the people that are there, the ambassador or tenant or whatever, she does work with them. Yes. And they help her. Yes. Oh, okay. Great. All right. Good. Thank you. I guess the last uh, question I have is, uh, job descriptions for an ambassador and for each of the attendant uh, are those are we've already have those in place or um we've got descriptions for some of them the um attendant and the tour guide uh we don't have them for the ambassador at this point uh we it's a pretty it's not a um complex set of duties. So we're very aware of what the, um, where we're headed with it. I, I guess I should say what the duties would be, but no, that will be um, developed as we go to actually fill these positions. Right. So, so as guess, well as the clerk position um, or the clerk duties are similar to what we currently expect of different um, administrative staff. Um, but this is a limited amount of time. Uh, it is not as robust as it would be if the person were working 20 or more hours in a, in a division. Yeah, I was just interested, I guess, more in the ambassador position because we don't have one that was in the visitor center. And if you're trying to A, recruit or B, let somebody know this is what your duties are, it's always helpful to have it in writing. So 
Yeah. Sounds like you've got something or we'll, we'll have something shortly, but it seems like that's an important piece of the whole equation. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So uh, we need to have a motion to approve miscellaneous compensation schedule 7 1 as proposed. I'd be happy to do that. Um, I move to approve the miscellaneous compensation schedule um, 7 1 as proposed. All right. Is there a second? I'll second it. All right. Um, so we'll do a vote. I will say ah, yes. Uh, um, Jim? Yes. And Nancy Crawley? Yeah. Yes. All right. Thank you. Uh, that's been uh, unanimous. We can move on to item five, agenda item five. Okay. So this is going back to the classification of a regular status position. We've had a position in the fire department that um, a, a clerical position that's been on the uh, miscellaneous compensation schedule. Uh, and so which means that it's been less than 20 hours per week, but the uh, hours are increasing up to 30 at this time. And that makes uh, the position regular status, benefits eligible, um, eligible to be in the pension system. So we move it into a different classification system. Um, and so again, the town manager could create the position and then uh, the personnel board approves the allocation to a classification and pay grade. Sometimes, or often, we when we create a position, we, we determine that we need a different classification title, job title and, and grouping. When we do that, when, when the board adds um, a title to the regular status schedule, that needs to go to town meeting for ratification, ultimately. So if we were proposing to add a fire prevention clerk position that was nothing, that needed its own unique title and set of duties, um, then you could approve it, we could put it in place, we can make a job offer, and then town meeting has to ratify it next year. Um, in this case, we believe that the set of duties, is, you know, the scope of the duties is comparable to positions we already have in other departments that are, are classified as senior department clerks. This goes a bit to what Jim was asking about. Do we really need an, a separate, um, other than program manager or BD, do we need another title? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. When you see a, a title on our classification plans, many of them have quite a number of employees in them. We have a lot of administrative assistants in different departments and the type of duties and the experience is the same even though they, they do something different. So um, in this particular case, we, we felt that it falls nicely under the senior department clerk um, I worked with the fire chief to go through the regular classification exercise, looking at the, the factors of the position and the responsibilities. And um, that's where we, we thought it would probably fall there. And when we did the scoring, it, it did. So this will not have to go to town meeting for ratification is the, the bottom line. If you approve it, it'll just be assigning it to an existing title and pay range. We have any questions, uh, comments from... Jim or Nancy? No. Oh, no. For me. None. No. Okay. Uh, Jim, did I hear a no from you too? No. Uh, yeah. No, I have no questions. Okay. I just want. I, I may have a just a couple here. Uh, I'm assuming that number one, it's we're moving. This person moving from 20 to 30 hours a week. So if I were to take a look at the 20 hour a week job description, which I would imagine is a department clerk, would that, was that the correct title before? Before it was less than 20 hours and it was an office clerk, oh. I believe, maybe an so, office assistant. I'm sorry. So I guess my point is I could take that job description and compare it to this one and I could see specific responsibilities or tasks that in fact are are new uh, because we're going from 20 hours to 30 hours. Correct, right. Okay. Um, now just from the standpoint, I, I, I know I've asked this before and memory sometimes escapes me, but 
the process. You, you're going to post this job? What 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 happens? In, in this particular case, so you know, there's an if and an but for everything. It depends on the situation, right? But in this case, we have an existing employee who's worked for the town for several years, does, is doing a great job. And um, so we anticipate just increasing that person's hours, not posting this position. So in the job posting uh, procedures or job posting requirements, there is a caveat that says if the person has been doing a lesser job but is going to do the same job, maybe with a few more hours or more responsibilities, then that job does not have to be posted. Is that? There, is that we, we use different techniques depending on our, the evaluation of the situation. The town manager needs to approve how, hmm. how we go about those. Sometimes, sometimes somebody might hold a position and the position is changing enough that we don't consider it to really just be a clear expansion or a clear fit, that the, the new duties that will be required aren't necessarily uh, ones that we know that the person who's been doing the old duties can do. So in that case, there might be an internal posting, an external posting, so we evaluate each, each situation. Okay, I, I, I think that's really important to do because um, you've got to uh, maintain the viability, I think, of your job posting program and having people feel that there's an opportunity to move into a higher paying, more responsible job. And if you don't create that particular kind of, of environment, then you're going to have some unhappy folks who think that there's some people getting you know, special treatment. And that's never, uh, even the perception is never good for the organization or for the, for the, for the department. So Sound, sounds like you're on, on top of this. All right, so we need to have uh, a, a motion to um, assign the described fire department clerical position with a classification title uh, as pointed out on agenda item five. Do I have a motion? I can do it. Um, okay. I, I make a motion to move um, to assign the described fire department clerical position to the classification title of senior department clerk in the AC3 grade. All right, do I have a second? Yeah. All right, um, so we'll vote. Uh, Bill, yes. Uh, Jim? Yes. And Nancy? Yeah. All right, so the personnel board has voted to accept um, the um, the classification position title of senior department clerk into the AC3 grade. All right. Um, any more classification or compensation um, schedule discussion uh, that we need, Amy, or can we move not, on? Not today. That's it for today. Are you are you anticipating uh, that there will be in the next month or so, or or is it? You, just, you don't you don't really know. I'm anticipating at least one that I know of. Okay, coming. all right. Mm -hmm. That'll uh, that'll alert the personnel board members that we're going to be back in action here in in, uh, in a few weeks of, or a few months. All right, so we're going to move on to um, agenda item six: personnel board bylaw structure independent review committee. Um, and we were planning on having Susan Bates um, in attendance tonight, but a very last minute obligation and situation arose. And so uh, she is, um, she's not gonna be with us. Um, Amy, do you have any, any comments, anything you can add here at this particular point of the agenda? Um, well, I, I was thinking, no, not necessarily anything that you wouldn't have to add, had either, Bill. I was just thinking that it might be helpful for the board to know um, about conversations you've you've had. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, so I'll I, I'll start then. Um, it's my understanding that uh, the select board is presently working on a charge for this independent committee. I don't have any indication of um, 
of how long it's going to continue to take for them to develop this. I, um, I was just informed that they're working on the charge and that, uh, you know, next steps will, will follow without a definition of what next steps are. I did, uh, uh, Select Board Member Susan uh, Bates reached out to me uh, probably uh, probably a month ago, and she was asking my input as the chair of the personnel board for my comments as it regards to the this independent review committee and what were the tasks or what were the goals and what was, it was a, just a general discussion of, of my thoughts as it related to what the independent committee uh, should, should be involved with and, and should, should be, uh, have as a part of their charge. I have no idea if anyone else was contacted. I was, um, I have no idea if, uh, if anyone else in the community has been contacted. All I can report on it obviously is my own uh, my own conversation that I had with Susan. So that's really the extent of, of what I know and what I've been told at this point um, about this independent review committee. Questions or comments, um, Nancy or Jim, that may, may not actually have any answers because don't know? Any other concerns, perhaps, or any other issues you believe we should have on the table as, as ones that are should be uh, you know should be thought about? Um, I just uh, want to make sure that this particular committee, um, Bill, and them that um, somebody from the board, the personal board, will be represented. Um, it would seem kind of I um, can't think of the right word to have a, a committee put together with select and community and not have somebody from the personal board represented on that committee. Um, so that, that's one thing I wanted to know if they selected it and if they're moving forward on it or if it's going to be a slow process. Um, that's just what I had in mind. And Okay, I, I have no idea uh the number of uh, members that they're looking at to to constitute this independent review committee and i have no idea as to who they are think should be members of this committee mm -hmm. uh, that is at least when i had my conversation with susan i uh, was uh, uh, was actually i think at that time they had they hadn't even even discussed the uh, composition of the independent review committee so that is, uh, there's no answer, at least at this moment, as to your, your question. Okay. Jim, any? Uh... Uh, no, not at this time. Okay, okay. Uh, I guess um, it might be appropriate just to see if there's any uh, comments or anything that should be noted in the minutes as it reflects uh, the, uh, the citizens. Um, if there's anyone who wants to um, add add anything here at this point, uh, I guess this is a good time to welcome them to to share their thoughts. Bill, may I? Yes. Yeah. Carlin yeah. Reed. Hi, Carlin Reed, Chair of the Public Access Advisory Committee. I'm encouraging the the Personnel Board and the HR Department to proceed with all due diligence on the three remaining positions for the PEG for the uh, Minuteman Media Network TV Studio. Uh, that, I believe that's normally a four and a half to five FTEs, and they're down to one or one and a half. And I, I believe it's impairing the function and capability of MN by not having those positions filled. So please, when you do have a chance and when you do have the ability, um, I look forward to seeing the, the, the classifications and um, having you folks uh, pass them with all, all good speed. Thanks. That's it. All right. Thank you. Can I just provide an FYI? I don't think there are any there that involve classification or anything that the personnel board would be working on. I think that's a matter of filling uh, existing but vacant positions, um, which isn't isn't something that comes before the the board. 
Okay, that's even better. Thank you very much, Amy. Appreciate it. That's, uh, that cuts out one step, doesn't it? Appreciate any, it. Any other comments or points from the citizens? Okay. Um, before we get to the adjournment, I, I know that um, um, I, had, I did ask uh, Susan whether or not the select board had had any discussion about the letter that we, the three of us on this on the personnel board submitted right. to the uh, to the select board, yeah. which voiced uh, you know some of our concerns and so forth. And I've been told that no, uh, at this particular time there has not been any discussion uh, on on the letter. So I thought I was interested in knowing uh, if there had been any movement in that regard. And because I felt felt responsible to share it to both with you, Nancy and Jim. Yeah. And at this point, we uh, there has been no discussion uh, by the select board on on our letter. Okay, um, I think we're ready. Unless there's any other comments or any other items that should be uh, presented or discussed. If there is, I'll give them a few seconds here. All right, uh, I think we're ready to adjourn the meeting. I'll need a motion to do that. Right. Um, I'll make a motion to adjourn. All right, thank I'll you. I'll second it. And thank you, Jim. So all in favor, uh, Bill, yes. Uh, Jim? Yes. And Nancy? Yes. All right, well, I thank you. Uh, I thank you, Amy, and uh, your, uh, your and Stephanie and, and Karen here to, uh, to who have been here through the whole session and I look forward to seeing everybody again sometime in the coming weeks, coming months. So thank okay. you so much. Thanks. Right, great. Thanks, everyone. Bye. -bye.